Hey, welcome. This is Pastor Drew Bradshaw from Riverside Christian Assembly. We're glad you tuned in. We got a great message for you today from the book of Esther on the character Xerxes and godly leadership. There's an old saying. It says, every man's home is his castle. In ancient times in England, it was law. So if someone tried to break in your, ca your house, you would just refer to that law when you went to court. If you killed them or beat them up real bad, you'd say, every man's house is his castle. It's a very ancient saying. We use it today in modern day saying that a man should be king of his own castle. Or a man should enjoy being home. But today as we begin a study in Godly Leadership, we see where that saying comes from. It comes from the book of Esther. This and the next three messages after it will be character studies on the book of Esther. Today we come to the first of Xerxes. If you've ever seen the movie The 300, he's that massive God King. He's portrayed much differently in another movie, One Night with the King. And today we see perhaps a different portrayal of him. The book of Esther takes place during the time when Israel was, was captive by the Babylonians. and The Babylonians had been overcome by Cyrus and the Persians. And several generations after Cyrus, Cyrus the Great, he allowed many of the Jews to go back to Jerusalem to begin rebuilding the temple. But this was before the walls of the city of Nehemiah had been built. So many had gone back and began that restoration of the temple, but it hadn't yet fully been completed. And in the time of this great king Xerxes, we see a, a tremendous amount of power was wielded by the Persian Empire. More than 127 divisions were broken up. From India all the way down to Egypt was owned by Xerxes. Xerxes puts on this tremendous festival. It was a, a massive party, and it goes on to talk about the details of how extravagant it was. The gold and the silver, the curtains, the, the couches, everything was lavished. And then after that, he has another party for those at the fortress of Susa. And during this party, when he was getting drunk and people could drink as much as they wanted, he called for his wife, Vashti. And Vashti was having a, a banquet also for the ladies there. And Vashti said, hey, I, I ain't coming this time. When he heard that, he was angered. He couldn't believe that his wife would upstage him like that. Here he wanted to show her off, and she refused to come. And so he asked his counselors, who it says he always asked, and they said, what, what can we do? How can we punish her? And they decided, this is what you do, banish her forever. Because, king, the day this happens, it's not just you that's at stake. All of our wives and all of the kingdom, they're going to disrespect their husbands. And if you don't do something about it, it's going to be on us. And so the king, he heeded his counselors. And he cast her out. And we see at the, at the very end of the passage, it comes to that verse that every man's home should be his castle. Every man should be ruler of his home. And today as we begin the study of godly leadership, we talk especially to the men. Men, you got to be strong godly leaders, not like Xerxes. Xerxes was a bit of a tyrant. Today we see the contrast of a tyrant and a godly king. And we end with what all men really need. You see, what Xerxes was after through this whole passage was respect. Men need love, and we see that on the Hallmark cards. Women need love, and men need respect. If men don't feel respected, then they act unloving. And if women feel unloved, they act disrespectful. And it's that cycle that goes over and over and over. And in the Bible, men are called to love their wives, and women are called to respect their husbands, or to submit to their husbands, allow the men to lead. This is the design of God. And women, I think we can learn a tremendous lesson from Vashti. She demanded respect. He called for her and said, Hey, I know holler back, girl. I ain't coming this time. I have a dog, Jax, he's a boxer, and he's a bit of a wild dog. And after every meal, I give him the scraps, just like Jesus said. Even the dogs get the scraps from the table. And if my dog doesn't eat it, well, Jesus was right again. That Jesus feeds the sparrows and the ravens. They'll come pecking at it. If they don't eat it, rats and mice from, from around the town, they'll come pecking away. If they don't get it, the ants and the, the dung beetles will get it. You see, the wild animals, the wild beasts will get the raw meat. Ladies, if you dress it appropriately... If you look like me, let me tell you something, there'll be a dog to find you. And if you get a guy because you're dressing like a harlot, one thing you know about that guy is he likes harlots. Be a person that demands respect. Women demand respect, and men demand respect, but get it the right way. Don't be so insecure. Sometimes my son and daughter will play prince and princess, or they'll play jails of princess, and my son Jehu, he's a king. And you know who I get to be? I get to be the dragon. And just because my son hits me with a stick and demands that I bow before him because he's the king, doesn't make him a king. And just because you want to be a good man, doesn't make you a good man. Just because you pretend to be a good man, doesn't make you a good man. In this passage, we see the arrogance of Xerxes all the way through it. His arrogance is shown in his extravagance. He's like those Pharisees lifting up their hands, showing off. He has this massive feast. 
and it talks about how elaborate the marble statues were and how beautiful the silk and the satin. This is just a lavish feast. It's a festival. He's just showing off. He's boasting. Remember what happened to Hezekiah when he showed off all the temple, all the treasury, everything he had? Within a generation, it was all pillaged. You see, God goes against the proud, but he lifts up the humble. You see, Xerxes seems to be very generous here, but he's only generous because he's insecure, because he's showing off. You and I need to be those that have a true sense of humility. In verse 10, we see another lesson. Men, if you want to be good godly leaders, don't be effeminate. Don't be a big softy. In verse 10, he asks his, his eunuchs. He hangs out with seven eunuchs, seven men that couldn't reproduce. You see, most kings hang out with bodyguards or princes or other kings or other strong men in their life. But Xerxes is hanging out with the softest guys he can find. He's hanging out with people on the fashion police, people that, that can just uh, critique the details of women's attire. Later in the book, we'll see Esther. She goes to one of these eunuchs and says, what do you think I should wear? And he's more than happy to tell her what she should wear. Men be men. Jesus spoke of John the Baptist. Why did the masses go to see him? Did you go to see someone wearing soft clothing? The word there is translated letter effeminate, where it says, no effeminate one to the kingdom of God. Men represent the warrior side of God, the side of God that's strong, that's stern, that's made to protect, made to provide, made to work hard. That's the image of God that we portray. Women, they portray a different side of God. And friend, if God has created you to be a man, be the best man you can be, be strong. Walk with the wise and you will be wise. There are some that always want to hang out with people dumber, uglier, weaker than themselves because they are insecure. And Xerxes is doing that here. But if you want to be better, surround yourself with people that will make you better in your life. In chapter 2, verse 1, we see this in the passage that Xerxes is easily angered. This is the characteristic of a tyrant, not a godly leader. Men, don't be abusive. Ladies, if, if a man you're dating curses in front of you, ever calls you a derogatory term, cut him. If a man that you're dating hangs up the phone in anger, cut him. You see, if you're just dating and you're arguing, you're bickering, and he's showing disrespect, it's not going to get any better. If you're married, go to counseling, work it out, pray for him, try, try and reconcile. But men, demand respect. And ladies, demand respect. Don't put up with people that have a quick temper. Don't befriend a man that's often angry. The Bible says it's okay to be angry, but don't sin while you're angry. Don't show it. Don't vent it. Only a fool vents his whole heart. A man that seeks his own isolation, he rages against all wisdom. A person who can't control their own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. You are yours. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Nobody makes me any one thing. Nobody makes me angry. Nobody makes me sad. If I'm sad or angry, I allow myself to be that. Xerxes is a hothead. He flies off the handle. Banish her. Kill them all. Hang them. Don't be a hothead, men. Be a godly leader. Godly leaders are careful with the authority God gives them. You're going to see Xerxes is quick to give his authority. There was an evil man named Haman, and he came up with this terrible law to have a whole people group just slaughtered. And Xerxes says, here's my signet ring. Go ahead, sign it how you want. Later, he gives Esther that same signet ring. Sign it how you want. God made us to have authority. God made Adam to have dominion over all the animals of the field. And Adam forfeited it to the serpent. The, the devil is the prince of this present world, but it wasn't originally so. Dominion, authority was originally given to humankind. But because of sin, now sin reigns over us. The authority that we have, use it. Be someone that says, God, I'm going to take responsibility for my family. I'm going to lead from the front. When there's work that needs to get done, I'm going to do it. When the kids need to get taught, when they need to get disciplined, when they need a hug, I'm the man that leads them. Be a leader, men. Don't delegate your authority. Walk in that authority. See, Xerxes always emphasized punishment. How can I hurt her? What can I do to punish her? What does the law allow me to do? But godly leaders, they give mercy. You see, where mercy is given, mercy will be received. The measure that you judge others is the measure that you'll be judged by. So be a merciful king. Be a merciful, godly person. You see, Xerxes always needs approval. He goes to this group of eunuchs. He goes to his counselors that he always went to and asked for advice. He looks around and he hears the peer pressure. Oh, men everywhere will be that. My whole empire will be that. His, his mind just runs wild. His imagination just departs from reality because he seeks other people's approval. If you fear God, you won't need to fear other people. You see, tyrants think they have control. They think they look secure, as Xerxes does. But in the end, he loses a beautiful wife, Vashti. And about 20 years later, one of his own men would kill him. Is that the kind of ending you want? 
be a godly leader, be a present, providing, protecting king. You see, every castle that was built was built for a specific purpose. It's built so that the people would have protection. And friend, man, if, if your house is your castle, that's a place of protection, a place of, of safety. Your kids and spouse should want to come home. They should want to be in your company, not worrying about your drinking problem or throwing stuff or breaking stuff or punching through a wall or using an abusive language. Make your house a house of safety, a place of tranquility, a, a haven from a dangerous world without. Castles are built for provision so that the storehouses could be kept there, so grain in the time of famine would be there. Food in your shelf, food on your fridge. Have a place where you guys sit down and eat dinner together. It's also a place where the king lives. Are you there for your family? I know many of you work very long hours, you work hard. Do your best to make some extra time for your family. If you can't, maybe leave a, a letter, or a video, or an extra phone call. Just go that extra 15, 20 minutes, an hour. Do something with your kids. Participate. Take an interest in what they're interested in. Be present in your castle. You see, God's got a purpose for your life. It's time that many of us see what makes people truly happy. There's three things that I can think of that will make every man happy. Number one is living your purpose in Christ. Xerxes was meant to be a better king than he really was. Friend, maybe you're meant to be better than you are. God has a high calling in your life. If you're walking in that specific call, the call of God is that all men would know him, all would be saved, that none would perish. If you don't know Jesus, you're not walking in your call. He wants us to be conformed to His image. That's predestination, that when you're in Christ, that you become more and more like Him. Are you in Christ? If you're not, you'll never be satisfied. You'll never be fulfilled. Once you're in Christ, I would say that God has a specific call for every single person. you got gifts and resources, talents, abilities, a background like nobody else. God wants to make you something. Maybe it's a, a barber or a, a plumber or a father or the best athlete you could possibly be or teacher, or preacher, or missionary. You gotta find what's gonna fulfill your heart by doing what God has called you to do. The second thing that will make every man happy is a good queen. You're a king and you have a castle, you gotta have a queen. A good wife comes from the Lord. That he who finds favor finds a good wife. That an inheritance can come from your father, your grandfather, but a good wife that comes from the Lord. Who doesn't want to come home to a woman that loves him? Who doesn't want to come home to a house that's well kept? Think of Proverbs chapter 31 where it talks about the godly woman. She has strength in her arms and her kids aren't afraid of the cold. That she has a good reputation. She listens. She's wise. She has discernment. Every woman should strive to be like that and every man should strive to have a woman like that. Live up to that calling. Don't settle. If you're not married, make sure you're selfish and find someone that, that's living godly because that will fulfill your heart. Ladies, be wise enough not to just settle for anybody. But make sure you can find someone that you can be yoked together with. Lastly, what whatever castle needs is wise subjects, is wise kids. You see, kids are like a quiver in the arms of their father. They're, they're, they're ready to shoot out. They're ready to go. A foolish son will bring shame to his father. You see, if you discipline your kids, they'll, they'll become wise in their older age. And as they get wise, you'll, you'll get a lot of joy from that. I remember as a kid, I never wanted to get in trouble. My dad was a real good dad. He was always there for me for sports and to talk to, and he was present at the dinner table. And man, I, you know, him and I had a great relationship. When I started getting close to high school, I never wanted to get in trouble. So I always thought if I get in trouble, it's going to make him look bad. It's going to make the churchy pastors look bad. It kept me out of a lot of trouble because I wanted to live righteous with him. That's what life's really all about, is living righteous with God. And if you want to live right with God, you'll stay on that right path. Today, friend, maybe you didn't have a good earthly father, but if you're a man, you can break that chain in your life. You can be that good father to your kids. You can give them the things you never had. You can be a tyrant, or you can be a godly king. You can look for the emptiness of life, or you can go after the things that will truly fulfill you, like your calling in life, having a godly wife and raising wise kids. Today we learn a lesson from Xerxes. Don't be a foolish man. Be a wise king.